God doesn't like lazy people. God likes people who use their hands. Who use their hands. Who exert themselves. So, my brother, my sister, yes, there's no job in the country. But have you prayed to ask, what will you have me do? Hello? Where can I engage myself? How can I turn money around? That's the question I always ask people when we want to give them a loan. Do you have the capacity to turn money around? If you don't have, learn it. Learn it. I know a sister here who bakes today, but she was never a baker before. She learned it from someone. Praise the name of the Lord. If you see what someone is doing and you like it, go and learn it. Go and learn it. I was saying it the other day that uh, I saw Sase, it was tying woman's hair. I said, huh? Well, is he around today? He was tying. Ah. I said, what are you doing? He said, this is what I do. I listen to it. To this. I said before. Money doesn't smell where it comes from. Nobody smells it. Say, nah, her time, money, now nah, be this one. When you exert yourself in real labor, the money will come. It will come. The Bible says that Isaac sowed in the land. Verse 12. Then Isaac sowed in the land and received in the same year, what? A hundredfold. A hundredfold. This is the manifestation of grace. Others may sow and get 30%. But God has already made you a candidate for a hundred percent. And I say receive it in Jesus' name. He got hundred percent. In the land of famine, it is customary for people to groan. But in that land, God was blessing his son abundantly. Because you are in Christ, you have been selected for God's favor. And may that favor manifest in your life today in the name of Jesus. I'm a researcher. I work with all kinds of organisms. But what I have found is this. Where people don't think there's anything, that is where God opens doors for me. Hello? I remember I was working on the life cycle of a parasite. My supervisor told me, hey, there's nothing there. There's nothing there. I said, sir, this is my interest. Just let me do what I want to do. And you know what? I got a breakthrough. I got a breakthrough. Where he said there was nothing, God had put something there for me. Where others say there is nothing, God will put something for you. And you know what? After I found something, he tried to hijack it. Yes, he tried to hijack it. <laughs> and I went to him in his office. I said, sir, I know that you are my supervisor. But take your hand off this thing. If I shout, it's not good, good for you. <laughs> I like you too much. So just take your hands off this matter. And quickly, quickly... He took himself out. Whatever you have labored for, no man will take from you in Jesus' name. So Isaac sold. And in the same year, he reaped a hundredfold because the Lord blessed him. God has promised he will bless the labors of our hands. So what's in your hand? 
what's in your hand. Verse 13 is quite instructive. He said, and the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became what? Very great. Let's see what the NIV version of, of, of uh, translation says. He said the man became rich and his wealth continued to grow and he became what? Very great. His wealth continued to grow and he became very rich. When we engage ourselves profitably in whatsoever we do, God takes us to the first level of being rich. Then he goes to the second level of expanding what we have. Your money that you got from being rich begins to work for you. And there's expansion of your holding. Oh, may God bless you with unlimited wealth in the name of Jesus. As you engage yourself. And it says, until the man became very wealthy. When we were growing up, there was this man called Omonua in this town. He owned a transport company. And his junior brother was my friend. Huh? He said, being interpreted. He said, my, my brother is very rich. He's so rich that I found some of his money growing mold. Hello? Growing mold. That is, it's been there for a long time. Nobody touched it. Mold and mucus started growing on it. Those are men that don't keep their money in the bank. And I said to myself, God, please. Help me to have money that I have the one that also grow mold. <laughs> Until the man's wealth knew no limit. I pray that this year will be your year of enlargement. Amen. Enlargement to the extent that you will be described as very wealthy. Very wealthy. Don't envy any man. Don't wish to be like any man. But ask God to make you what he wrote over your life. The day you were born and the day you were saved. When I was admissions officer for my faculty, people said to me, you don't hammer. Hello, you understand what I mean? Oh, you have a chance to make money. If you had a slot for medicine, you could get 100,000, 200,000. And imagine if you had 10 of such slots, you don't really hammer. And some young men in the faculty will come to me and ask me to give them slots so that they can make money out of it. I didn't make money and I told them it's immoral what you people are if someone is qualified bring the name I will admit but I won't look where you are coming from if you want to collect money from the person the person must be dumb enough to give you money hello but I won't collect money and I won't ask you to the next year they said since you not receive or agree to do waiting God Say, make you take rich. God will punish you. I was the biggest fool as far as they were concerned. And I simply answered them. If this is how God planned to make me rich, then he made a mistake the day he created me. Hello? God will not make you rich by unrighteous money. He will bless the labors of your hand. Praise the name of the Lord. 
And the man became rich and his wealth continued to grow until he be became what? Very rich. And the Bible says the Philistines envied him. They envied him. I pray that you will also get to the level that people will envy you. Yes. They say, ha! Ah, I wish I'm like that man. God will make you a reference point in the name of Jesus. I always say that whatever was operational in my family until I came, let it end with that generation. Hello? I'm a new generation because I am in Christ. Because I am God's child, he knows what to do for me. All we need to do is to walk with him. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Philistines envied him. And they said, we don't want you here anymore. When there's crisis in any land, it is the foreigner that always takes the, the rap. You know what I mean? When the Nigerian economy started going down, we said it was Ghanaians that, was, that were responsible. And they said, Ghana must what? Ghana must go. Many people may not know how it came about. We said, Ghana must go. So they started making this bag to carry load. That's how Ghana must go came. The poor people didn't do anything. When there's scarcity in the land, they said it's because this man is here. He's taking what our people. That's what they also do in Europe. When there's a depression in their economy, it is the foreigners they go after. They have taken our jobs. Some have even accused our boys of taking their girls. If you marry them with the Nigerians, find them. Blessed be the name of the Lord. They said, come and leave our land. All the wells that Abraham dug, they started covering them. And Isaac would go and open them up again. They will fill it with earth. They will fill it with rocks. Go away from us. One prayer I pray for you is this. May no man stop your wells. And even if they stop it, don't let that disgust encourage you or weigh down your hand. This is the third thing I want to dwell with. Many people, when they are in adversity, they let that weigh them down and remove their focus from what they ought to be doing. Sojourn in this land, so here and I will bless you. Don't let opposition turn you away from what you ought to be doing. Isaac continued to dig because he knew this, the sustenance of his wealth lay in his digging. His crops would need water, his flocks would need water. So if any man was able to distract him from digging, then there would be no water. His flocks would begin to dry and his crops would not do well. Hello? So he focused. In times of adversity, focus. Don't be distracted. He dug several wells and they strove for it. And he continued. Until in verse 22, the, the scripture tells us he dug another one. And for that, they didn't strive. Anyone who is striving with you, this year they will be tired. They will be tired. Number two, God will give them another assignment. I always tell people, the day God will bless you, the demon of someone who has been standing on the way, he will have the urge to go and urinate or pass through. Hello? 
And by the time he comes back, God would have blessed you and he has nothing to hold back again. If you believe that, say amen. amen. Yes. God is a master strategist. The people continued until one day they said, oh boy, let's go home. I don't tire. I, I, I remember I went to one village, okay, to do some research. They said they worship the river and the fish in that river are the children of the river, of the mummy water in that river. So they stayed with us so that we don't, we don't kill the fish. You know what I told my team? We will all stay inside this water today. You are wearing boots. They are with ordinary leg. Let's see who will give up first. <laughs> After one hour, they said to us, we'll never stay in it. I said, okay, we never even see what we they look for. After, after one and a half hours, they started shaking like Shakespeare. We were enjoying our work because we were wearing what? Wearing boots. After two hours, two and a half hours, I said, okay, make what they do. Anytime we're not finished, make what they go. Praise the Lord. Now so it go be. Then go leave you for where your blessings day. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when they had left, I said to my team, look them. Share the sentence, Sabi. Make the constant inside water now. The next time we came, we said, hey, where are those men that went with us? Uh, they said, no, go. We no say, you know, catch any fish. Oh, may the Lord make room for you in the name of Jesus. That's how we concluded that research without interference. God will make room for you. And the man who is pursuing you today is actually pursuing you to where God wants you to be. Hello? Yes, he may not see it. He's pursuing you and pursuing you. What happened in verse 22? He said the Lord has given us a large place. And we will prosper where? In this land. Now the Lord has given us room. And we will flourish in this land. My interpretation of it is this. Where they were was probably too small. God allowed them to drive him to a bigger place that they had no oversight and they had no power to interfere with. God will put you in the place bigger than where you are now. He will give you a big room. That's the meaning of Rehoboth. And you will flourish in this country. You will flourish in this land. All that businesses may fold up. But yours will not. What you do will continue to flourish. Day after day. Week after week. Year after year. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sojourn in this land. He obeyed. We are about to do election also. Vote for the right person and try to be obedient. Hello? Did I say anything? No. I just said vote for the right person and be obedient to this charge that I give you today. Just be obedient and God will bless you. Because Isaac obeyed God. And what, did, what happened to him? God blessed him. So be obedient. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Secondly, I said be engaged. Don't be a lazy person. Don't be like that pastor who believes his wife should drop her salary at the apostle's feet. Go out and walk. Go and look for your golden fleece. It's waiting out there for you. It's waiting. It won't come to you in your house. You will go to meet it. And God will direct your feet in Jesus' name. And as you do this, please, 
I believe that God will give you expansion. He will give you a release, first of all. He will give you an expansion and he will give you a multiplication in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to pray that God will make you a success in 2022. And make it your year of what? Divine enlargement. That when people see you, they say, oh boy, you don't hammer. You don't hammer. That will be your story in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Shall we stand up to pray? I want you to pray for yourself. You know what you desire. How many of us here think they are where they want they should be? You are satisfied with where you, where you are now. Mm -mm, I'm not. Just pray for yourself and say, Lord, life can be better than this. Give me that which is my portion. In the land of the living. Bless me. That's what Jacob said to the angel that wrestled with him. I will not let you go until you bless me. Before this program ends, Lord, bless me. Do something in my life to mark the spirit and the word 2022. Bless me. Bless me. Bless my wife. Bless my children. Bless me. And the angel asked Jacob, what is your name? He said, my name is Jacob. And he said, from henceforth your name will no longer be Jacob. Pray that God will give you a change of name. A change of name. Whatever you are now. That God will give you a change of name. He called him Israel. He a prince. That has power with God and with man. Pray that God will change your name. It will change your situation. To what you desire. The Bible said that when Jacob crossed the river, the sun rose with him, but he was a new man. That today will be the end of your old name, and when the sun rises tomorrow morning, it will rise upon you with a new name in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to lift your hands to the Lord. Lift them up. Lord, I ask that you put your hand upon our hands. Impart us tonight that whatever we sow in this land with our hands, it will become a hundredfold in the name of Jesus. No more losses, no more shortages. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Oh, make us, oh Lord, an example of your blessing. Let people see us and say, you are now the blessed of the Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Father. Glory and honor be unto you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. There is no competition in destiny. It's a full house. Ask God to reveal to you what others are not seeing. And when you discover it, you will prosper. Praise the Lord. We are believing God that at the end of this year, when testimonies are being given, people will be clapping and smiling and congratulating others. Praise the Lord. Okay, please, if you are I just visiting us for this program, can we see your hands, please? Oh, please, can you stand? I want to welcome those who are visiting us. You are coming, you have come rather as a result of this program. Somebody invited you. Any such persons? Praise the Lord. Welcome, my brothers. Welcome, my sisters, for joining us. I'm sure you've been blessed. It is possible that God will even enable you to use what you have learned tonight more than some people who are in the house. <laughs> it does happen that way sometimes. And they say, I remember what that pastor said, and I came to it. Today, my life has changed. It's possible. Shall we stand with our offering tonight as we do unto the Lord? Pastor, thank you very much. We are grateful. Father, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity. We say thank you for how you've been feeding us throughout this week, O oh Lord, since Wednesday. Lord, as we give, as we thank you tonight, O oh Lord, we know your blessing shall not depart from us in Jesus' name. Thank you for as many as have come. Thank you, O Lord, for your word to us. Thank you, Lord, for the one we have received, Lord, that will use it to your glory and honor. This we ask, Lord, with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. for one minute at least today we are closing much earlier and we thank God for that tomorrow tomorrow the program continues and Bishop Wale will be with us tomorrow Amen I'm sure for those who know the tradition of the spirit and the word our pastor would have ministered the first day and then our guest speaker takes over but Bishop Wale had to be in um, Agbo this evening. And then that's why we are not having tomorrow's session. Tomorrow morning he will be coming back from Agbo. Then he will be with us in the evening. 
So in the evening, our program continues and Bishop Wale will be with us. Praise the name of the Lord. All things work together for good. That gives us opportunity to go for Brother Collie's wedding tomorrow morning. Amen. So the buses will be available in church. Buses will leave 9.30. Not gathering 9.30. So please let's come early. The wedding is at 10. It's our own wedding. We are going to pick. We are going to bring a wife to join us. That's uh, evangelism by marriage. Praise the name of the Lord.